The first two months of the year have been anything but boring when it comes to the prevailing economic and market narrative. In fact, we've had three narrative changes in quite a short period of time. Coming into the year, consensus believed that a recession was a foregone conclusion. By mid to late January, a soft landing became the primary storyline following cooler inflation and wage prints, a possibility that was highlighted by several FOMC committee members. Fast forward to today, and many people believe that the Fed is behind the curve given the strengthening of economic data and the firming of inflation. The improvement in economic activity has been robust and broad-based. When looking at the labor markets, you've seen an acceleration of payroll creation, a firmness of initial jobless claims, and job openings are back on the rise. Housing, which is the most interest rate sensitive area of the U.S. economy, is showing some signs of life and starting to get stronger here recently. Lastly, manufacturing, which has been in the doldrums, is showing signs of stabilization. On the back of this renewed economic momentum, many investors have adopted the view that a soft landing ultimately will materialize. In fact, when looking at Google search trends for the U.S., searches for the term soft landing have jumped to a 15-year high last month. Search activity was last at these levels in May of 2008, for a few months prior to the Lehman Brothers bankruptcy and the official beginning of the credit crunch known as the global financial crisis. While today's backdrop is clearly different, this should serve as a reminder that there are many head fakes and pockets of optimism for the U.S. economy as it moves towards and through a recessionary period. When faced with conflicting data, we come back to the Clearbridge Recession Risk Dashboard as our guiding light to the most likely path for the U.S. economy. The dashboard has maintained an overall red recessionary signal since August of 2022 and continues to weaken underneath the surface in recent months. At present, the dashboard shows only three non-red signals and had no indicator changes in the month of February. We continue to believe that a U.S. recession is in the cards later this year despite recent economic momentum. One of the reasons we believe a recession is more likely than a soft landing is given the nature of the economic data that's been improving. Most of that data is lagging or coincident, meaning it can tell us where we've been or where we are, not necessarily where we're going. Take payrolls, for example. Payrolls are a great coincident indicator that's useful in telling us what's happening in real time. However, payrolls demonstrate nonlinearity in recessions, meaning as a recession comes, they collapse very quickly. As a result, healthy payroll readings today don't necessarily tell us what's going to happen three or six months out. This suggests that investors should temper their enthusiasm about what a healthy labor market means in the terms of the economic outlook for 2023. By contrast, many leading indicators are looking far more precarious at the moment. When looking at the conference board's leading economic indicator index, we've seen 11th monthly decline in this index, which is clearly through the recessionary danger zone of four monthly declines. When looking at it from a different vantage point, the LEIs are down 5.8% on a year-over-year -year basis the largest decline of LEIs ahead of a recession that you've seen since the late 1960s was negative 5.7% ahead of the 1980 downturn. Put differently, leading indicators are suggesting that even though we're seeing some economic strength here, we should be very cautious in reading what that means for later in 2023. Another reason why I believe that we could be in for a deeper recession than what consensus is anticipating is the Fed's reaction function has changed this cycle compared to cycles of the past. When looking at the Fed's dot plots for the unemployment rate, the Fed is expecting the unemployment rate to rise from 3.4% currently to 4.6% at the end of 2023. This is notable because it violates the SOM rule, which states when the unemployment rate rises by a half a percent or more, a recession always materializes. Put differently, when it comes to the labor market, an object of motion tends to stay in motion. But the Fed is usually has little tolerance for job loss, but that is not the case today given higher inflation prints and the desire to bring inflation back down to its 2% target on a sustainable basis. Usually, as the economy is transitioning from job creation to job loss, the Fed does its first rate cut. A year after that rate cut, the U.S. economy generally loses 800,000 jobs. Given what the Fed is projecting for the rise of the unemployment rate this year, that would translate to over 2 million job losses in the U.S. economy in an environment where the Fed is continuing to actively hike. Put differently, the Fed is going to have a delayed reaction function to providing liquidity to the economy, and that is going to amplify recession risk 
as we look out on the horizon. Now, given this environment, we believe that this is going to be a choppy year for U.S. equities. With financial markets discounting less of a recession over the last few months, we believe there's a tactical opportunity emerging for high-quality dividend growers. The 2023 rally has largely been led by last year's laggards, with investors buying the most beaten down areas of the market given the improvement of the economic outlook that we've been experiencing. At the same time, the improvement in the data has created a bid for more cyclical areas of the market at the expense of more defensive and quality areas as well. If our view that a recession remains the most likely outcome is correct, a reversal on this recent leadership should ensue, which would favor a return to higher quality dividend growers. Separately, equities demonstrating these characteristics could also do well in a no landing scenario in which the Fed would need to hike more than what's currently anticipated due to resilient economic activity and elevated inflation. While this portion of the market would likely lag in a true soft landing, high quality dividend growers look attractive from our perspective on what we expect from the economic environment on the horizon.